Alright, what's up guys? Um, so yeah, this video is going to be about the MiG-23. It's a pretty good flying aircraft, um, $70 USSR premium. Uh, that's of course in US dollars. Um, so I'm assuming, you know, everybody that's watching this probably already knows what the MiG-23 is and you've probably seen it plenty of times in your 11.3 uh, matches. But it's actually a really good um, grind premium for the Russian tech tree. Um, so far, I'm only like about halfway through the tech tree, but um, I'm getting there. Uh, but yeah, so this video is just gonna be me grinding with the MiG 23. Uh, you know, I'll be giving my preferences on, you know, what weapons and, you know, we'll try out different missile loadouts and maybe even try destroying some bases. I think the amount of rockets you can carry right here is enough, but at the same time, yeah, it should be enough. Uh, and then, of course, you know, once I destroy the bases, I can use the gun pods, but for now, uh, until later, I'm going to be using just purely air-to-air -air weaponry. Um, speaking of which, I'll start off with the R24Ts and the R60Ms. Um, personally, I haven't found a big difference between the Ts and the Rs. Um, but I believe the one of the main differences is the T... Yeah. So R24T, it uses radar guidance, but it's basically just like a big IR seeking missile. You'll see in the match. So, um, but basically I have six IR seeking missiles, but one of them is really good with radar. Um, but then, yeah, maybe, uh, maybe take out some bombs later. Uh, we could just do our 60s if we wanted to but yeah I personally like this aircraft I think it's really good um, you know it's pretty pretty fast um, typically if you're just above the ground you can get to about Mach 1.17 before before your wings rip uh, but if you're higher altitude like 5,000 uh, 5,000 meters plus then you can get upwards of like Mach 1.4 You know around there So yeah, this really good fast aircraft not really The best for dogfighting more for like head-on standoffs with missiles um, You know just like the majority of aircraft at top tier But yeah, so let's get in a match and see what happens Alright, so we're on the battle for Vietnam map. Um, pretty decently sized map. I'm probably going to climb up a little bit to gain some speed. Also, I don't know if anyone else has been having this problem, but sometimes I spawn into the match with like 5 minutes of fuel, and I don't notice, so I just run out of fuel in the middle of the match. Supposedly, from other people, it's a glitch with the fuel slider. Um, I'm assuming if it is a glitch, it'll get fixed pretty pretty soon. But it seems like we're at our tier pretty much. Um, nothing, nothing really above 11.7. Um, a lot of MiG 23s in my team today. The thing that's also really nice about this aircraft is that it's strong engine. Uh, allows you to accelerate really quickly, kind of like the F-104, how you can just boom and zoom. Um, but typically, you know, everything at this battle rating has pretty strong engines, so they can catch up to you and, you know, just uh, shoot a missile at you, something like that. Um, it does get a decent amount of countermeasures, as you can see. Um, right now I have mixed countermeasures, so I have 36 of each. I'm probably going to change it to fair priority, though. Because you know, once you get close, I uh, see Mach 1.15 there, and it told me to reduce speed. 
but yeah, once you get close to the enemy, like within 10 kilometers, uh, using chaff doesn't help you very much. Now, notching and diving, that's mainly what's going to help you evade uh, radar-seeking missiles. So next match, if I remember, I'll probably change it to mixed. But yeah, we're climbing up here. Probably going to climb up to about 5,000 meters. Uh, probably the first negative thing I'm going to say about this aircraft today is once you get fast, it's it's harder to move without ripping your wings off. And also, as you can see here, uh, oops. Um, as you can see here, the radar mode is search, look down. So, if you if you noticed, um, oh, okay, okay, no, no, that's a friendly F-14. Um, but if you noticed earlier, it was on the MTI search mode while we were closer to the ground. So automatically, when you're higher up, it'll search to uh, it'll switch to look down which I don't know if I like very much. I think I would just rather like the bull stopler, but it's okay if you're if you dive down on people cuz you know it allows you to keep a pretty good lock. Um finally starting to see some enemies here. But I, I would still just rather um I would still just rather have the bull stopler mode cuz you can see right now I'm getting some ground clutter and it's messing up my radar. Is that an enemy? What is that? I don't know what my radar has a lock on, but... There's a mirage here. I don't know if he sees me, actually. If he doesn't see me, he definitely hears me. I think he... Alright, hold on a minute. We're gonna see if we can get a kill on this guy here. Fox 2. Tracking. And... Oh, wow. Yeah, he, he evaded the missile and he died. Wow. Okay. Um, Could have gotten the kill there. Uh, I did switch to the IR seeking. I don't know if you'd call it a radar, but just the IRST right here. Um, usually that can help you keep your missiles on target, especially if your missiles don't have IRCCM. And there's not many... Oh, okay. For a second I thought that missile was coming after me. Let's see if maybe we can get a shot off on this 39. Never mind, I was not paying attention. I died to the event mirage. Yeah, that's a skill issue on my part. I should have been paying attention, but uh, yeah, you know what? Let's let's switch to the uh, radar seeking missiles. Um, the R twenty four Rs. These um, instead of being mainly IR seeking and just slaving to the radar, these are purely semi-active radar homing. Um, but I believe... Actually, yeah, no, I'm pretty sure it's just purely radar seeking. On the Afghanistan map now, so it's a little bit of a smaller map, which is not necessarily a bad thing. <clears throat> oh yeah, change that to flare priority. And just gonna make sure that that's on full tank. If I had to rate this aircraft though, um, actually, you know what? I'll do that towards the end of the video. Um, but yeah, this aircraft is good if you know what you're doing. Um, I haven't necessarily mastered how to play it yet, but I think I have a few for it. Um, but yeah, people who just they fire the miss. Like th there was one time where I was in a match, and this other MiG-23 was on the other team, and he just fired like four of his R-60s at me, like all four. Of them. And I just flared all. Of them. So if if you don't know what you're doing, then you know 
this aircraft is definitely going to be a lot harder for you. But if you can figure out, you know, how to position yourself in this, um, you know, how high you should be, you know, depending on what map you're on. Like on this map, usually I have better luck staying at a low altitude um, because the enemies, they come from either the left, to the center, or the right. So it's hard to predict where they're going to come from. Uh, but yeah, as I was saying, if you know what you're doing, then you can definitely get yourself some kills in this thing. Just past the friendly bases now. So you can see uh, Mach 1.24 here. This thing definitely is fast on ground level. But finding yourself near Mach 2, I feel like, is a little bit pushing it. You know, you have to be at a really high altitude for that. And, you know, of course, it's going to take you a while to accelerate to that speed. Got a lock on an F4S here. Fox 1, looks like it's tracking, oh and he died right before my missile reached him, unfortunate. I'm gonna fire an R60 at this F4S here, and okay, he dies there too. Can't tell if that missile's coming for me, I think it is, yep. where, no, that's what I'm saying with uh, if you're being shot at by a radar seeking, being shot at by a radar seeking missile, it's it's hard to actually dodge it. Um, if you're closer than 10 kilometers, you can chaff as much as you want. You can, you might be able to notch it, but even then, if you're notching, the radars still hold for a long time. So, uh, yeah, this is also like I just got on when I started recording, so my senses and game sense isn't really uh, up to par right now but once I get in a few matches and warm up then it'll be much better all right in the uh, Golan Golan Heights I don't know how you pronounce it map here um, not as big as the Vietnam map but not as small as the Afghanistan map it's right in the middle so yeah as I was saying earlier um, you just you gotta learn how to play on the map that you're on with the aircraft that you're in if you're in a plane that doesn't climb very well or just performs better in higher density uh, yeah higher density air then you would want to stay low around you, drawing missiles in, then you could separate yourself. Um, but yeah, so typically what works out best for me is getting a lock on someone that's about 10-15 kilometers away and shooting a Fox 1 at them, and then uh, start to defend, you know, trying to keep that lock. Usually that also works better when I'm at higher altitudes, but the thing is then, uh, I feel like the chaff works better for people who are being shot at from higher altitudes. I don't know why, but it seems like the chaff confuses my radar more. Um, but yeah, that's one thing. Um, you always, in this thing, you always have to have chaff, because you're not going to be able to pull too many G's and you're not really going to be able to evade missiles extremely well. So you should always have some chaff, especially if you're facing off against the Americans, you know, with their F-14s. Um, it'll only get worse once they add um, Fox 3s to the game, like the AIM-120 and the R-77, all those. It's only going to get worse because 
you know, once that missile gets like eight kilometers, ten kilometers away, it'll use its own radar, so it's gonna be even harder to fuse that thing. Doing some low flying here. Um, I will admit, doing low flying in this thing, I have died many times because of it. Um, but yeah. Gonna try to stay lower altitude this game because I do like the radar better when I'm level with the person I'm shooting at. And just the low density mode that automatically switches just isn't the best for me. Um, maybe if I can get a lock on someone that's higher than me, actually, wouldn't be a, such a bad idea either. Yeah, I know, it seems like they're still a little bit far. Getting really close to their bases now, we should be seeing them pretty soon here. Still can't get a lock on any of these people up here. Oh, oh, that's a missile, yeah. Yeah, I'm being tracked now. I'm gonna try to use the ground to cover myself. Um, if it's a semi active missile that might be coming after me, then I'll. see it, he's not flaring, and he's dead. Right? What? How? Oh, he ran away from the missile, he was faster than the missile somehow, okay. I see how it is. Yeah, I'm in, yeah. There's too much to try and pay attention to. Wow, everybody either runs away from my missiles today, or they die before my missile can reach them. That's... that's unfortunate. I don't even know if I'm gonna keep these matches in. Maybe this video will just... Maybe I'll just have a compilation of me dying. Um... I'm not giving this aircraft a good reputation right now. Um... Because of the fact that I'm just not getting too lucky in it. Um, but don't get me wrong. As I said, this this is a good aircraft. You just you need to know how to play it. And I'm still, you know, even after like a year of having it, I'm still learning. Um, I haven't been playing this thing very often though. Um, only only every once in a while. But yeah, I have some other aircraft that we could do reviews on. Um, I might make a video of me grinding US Air action. Because um, I do have some premiums there for the US. I'll probably do either 10 0 or 11 3. You know, one thing that kind of caught me by surprise is the F5C being moved up to 10.3 just because it got some more bombs. I don't know if that's like enough to move it up because the F5C it's, it's really capable. It can pull a lot and it has some pretty nice missiles. But it's just, I don't know if it's 10.3 material. I feel like it was just fine at 10.0. Maybe some other people had some different experiences than me, but that's just personally what I think. Uh, I'm gonna use the same tactic as I did the last match. I'm gonna try and stay low and get lock on people that might be higher or the same level. Preferably not the same level, because 
the ground, like they could just fly, um, fly by a mountain and just make me lose luck. But yeah, look, not even two matches, I mean, sorry, not even two minutes into the match and already Mach 1.12. I had to turn off my afterburner for a couple seconds just because I was overspeeding. So this is a very fast aircraft. I'll give that. I'll, I'll give it that. Um, but yeah. Another thing is you also do get um, some large caliber countermeasures, which can be good for, you know, trying to evade IR missiles. Uh, you know, just the heat coming off these countermeasures definitely, you know, will confuse some missiles. Um, another thing is, I never really realized that the Soviets, for a long time, never actually had a multifunctional display for their radars and other things like that. Like, for example, um, there's there's no display uh, other than the heads-up display where you could see the radar going back and forth there. Other than that, there's no display for the radar. So it must have been really hard for the pilots who used to fly this thing to... Maybe, maybe they were used to it and just knew how to do it, but personally I would find it hard. You know, like... I think the first multifunctional display that the Americans put in. Okay, hold on. There's an Aardvark over here approaching. Locked. Okay, critical hit. Not severe damage though. Looks like I got a down tier. Um, possibly 10.7. Okay, got a kill on that Aardvark. I'm gonna turn back around and see if I can catch up to this F5. This thing does extremely well in down tiers though, I will say, but I'm not actually too sure. There's a lot of mirages here too. Uh, yeah, no, I, I believe I did get down, down tier to uh, either 10.7 or 10.3, because there is an A-10, I saw it over in the distance here. I think that was it right there, yeah. Let's see if I can get a longer shot on this A-10. I try my best to keep lock. I don't think it's gonna do too well. Yeah, no, lost lock. Unfortunate. Oh! Wait. Oh, I actually did? What? I think my missile still tracked after I lost lock. Yeah, wow, I did. That's surprising. A-10 shot a 9L at me, but yeah, as I was talking about earlier, just... Wow, he shot both at me. That wasn't very smart. Yeah, that was not very smart of that guy. There's an F-5 here. I'm gonna see if I can, uh... Get this missile off on him. Nope. I made it pull too hard. Yep, and I also wasn't paying attention. Yep, and a reverse flat spin. Wow. Okay. Well, I got a kill finally. Um, but I was, I, I was not paying attention again. Did at least get one kill though. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention the SL booster and the RP booster for this thing are insane. Look, I don't have any boosters active right now. The only thing is just this. These boosters are incredibly good. This is almost a thousand percent SL booster. So yeah, it is really good for grinding if you can get a lot of kills. Like, I mean, I'm only researching like 5.0 aircraft here. But I believe I got three kills in a game. Yeah, look, I just gained another 
Wait. Yeah, I just gained like another five, ten thousand RP just then because that match finished. But it is an extremely good uh, aircraft in terms of the percentage boosters that you get. You know, especially if you pair it up with like maybe a 75% SL or, you know, uh, RP booster, then it, even, it becomes even better. So, yeah, if you're looking to grind the USSR tech tree for air, this would be a good option, but I encourage you to find out how to use it first. You know, maybe watch some videos, familiarize yourself with top tier if you haven't already. Just because going into the games blind and not knowing how to use like missiles it's not you're just gonna die and you're not gonna get any kills and you're just gonna cause your team to lose so you need to familiarize yourself with you know at least like rank six planes at the minimum because these are you know th these are where they start to get other missiles and things like that like the su-25 i'm not sure if the mig-17 actually gets missiles yeah no um, you know, the MiG-19, just familiarize yourself with missiles, uh, and then you get up here where you get, you start getting radar-seeking missiles, like the MiG-21 SMT. Just things, things like these planes, you know, maybe if you've gotten far into a different country, just try to get into these ranks before buying yourself a premium like this, because it will take you... A few months to actually learn how to play it but we're gonna play a couple more matches and that'll be it for this video so uh yeah wow afghanistan again looky here guys that's wow that's just really surprising um What was I saying about map rotation? <laughs> yeah, th that's kind of... I don't even have words to describe that. We've gotten the same, like, I think three maps today. And I've already played, like, six matches in this thing. Maybe, I don't know, I wasn't counting. You see, that right there... Yeah. I'm not sure what that guy was doing. Somehow it took off. But how, I have no idea. Clearly he knows what he's doing. You know, he has, uh, I believe, an 11.3 aircraft, so... Whatever. That was just odd. MiG-23s and F-104s, they just surpass everything. Like, look, I'm already a kilometer behind, uh, in front of that guy there. I am gonna get extremely low and face myself this way, because I have seen more enemies come from this way. Yep, look, see, already damaging the bases there. I'm gonna get a missile off on that guy, hopefully for that. F-16 doesn't come after me. Nothing on the left so far. Yeah, it looks like they're all turning away, so that's nice. Missile is tracking, but no hit. R-60 off on the Kurnas, he's dead. Okay, 
gonna get a little bit lower. Event Jaguar looks like he's trying to turn on me right now. I have some teammates with me though, so hopefully they can help. F-104, Italian. J7D behind me, a lot of people in front of me. I gotta be careful not to crash, trying to pay attention to this. Got guns off on that J7. I'm gonna die here to this Harrier. Okay, see this is what I was talking about earlier in the video, I just, I, I gotta get warmed up. You know, I got two kills, uh, one missile, one gun kill. Not bad, not bad. But just look at the SL gains, two kills only, and 36,000 SL. That's insane to me. Um, I think we'll do a couple matches, uh, guns only, and with rockets. And then I think those will be the last two. Oh, I got the uh, test drive for a premium. Okay. Okay. Am I missing something? Because we, we have Golden Heights again. Is there... I'm not too sure what's happening. There might be like a select amount of maps that you can play a day. I don't know if that's what's happening right now or what, but it's, it's weird. As I've said, we've been getting like the same three maps all day today. But this match, uh, I've taken rockets, gonna see if we can destroy a base, see how much SL that gets us. This thing also is pretty good for casts. Um, if you're familiar with the manual guiding, manual guided missiles, the ones you have to control with your keyboard, if you're familiar with that, um, it can be pretty viable. And you know, it carries a decent amount of rockets. It even has the uh, S24s, those pretty big rockets there. So, yeah. But I believe I would have to expend almost all of my rockets to take out a base. Um, but yeah, we're also going to see if I can get any gun kills in this match. Oh wow, F-14 just shot all of his missiles and turned back around. Or tur turned back around. Not surprising to me, honestly. Seems like that's what every F-14 player does. Oh wow, too high of a speed to shoot these rockets, seriously? What is that? That makes no sense, okay. Uh, give me one sec, I guess I have to turn back around. Hopefully this SPAA doesn't actually get shots off on me. Oh, it turns out it actually wasn't enough to completely destroy the base, but we still did get a lot of SL from that because uh, of how much we damaged it. That's unfortunate, though. We were that close to destroying that base. Um, ooh, maybe we can sneak behind this MiG-23 here, snag a gun kill off of him. That's a missile coming at me. This is not very good. 
Ah, I'm dead. Yep. Tried to evade it. Couldn't. Oh, that's why. Yeah. He was way too close for me to do anything about that missile. Um. Okay. Doesn't seem like it would be too good at bombing or rocketing bases. Um. But. If you really want to, I guess you could do it. Um, but yeah, I think that's going to be the end of this video. Uh, so I said I was going to rate the aircraft. In terms of beginner friendliness, I would rate it a 2, maybe a 3 out of 10. In terms of mobility and dogfighting, probably... You know, a mid 5 out of 10, because even with its swept wings, it still is not up to par with something like an F-16 or F-14. Uh, in terms of its armaments, I would rate it a good 7 or 8 out of 10. It has pretty good missiles for its BR. It's got four R-60s, uh, you know, good semi-active missiles, uh, lo super long-range IR missiles. Um, it's got some bombs if you want to do some CAS, drop tanks, uh, manual guided missiles I was talking about. So yeah, it, it is a pretty good all-rounder in terms of its weapons. Um, so yeah, in terms of speed, I'd rate it a 10 out of 10. Pretty much at every altitude, you're going to be fast, really fast. Um, so 10 out of 10 for speed and yeah overall I would rate this plane a 7 or 8 out of 10 um, you know if you're pretty experienced and you're looking to grind the USSR if, if you can afford it and you want to buy it I would say do it you know just as long as you make good use out of it and you learn how to play it it's going to be a good aircraft for you so, but that's going to be it for today. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one.